Hey everyone, so today's video is for the 2023 Breast Cancer Awareness Box. If you are new to the indie space, every year Chrissy from Hearts and Promises does a special edition breast cancer awareness box for the month of September, and a portion of proceeds from these swatches will be going to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So this year the box goes on sale Sunday, September 3rd, and as always I'll have all the information down in the description box. Before we get into today's video, I got a couple of things to mention, and the first being, if you are new around here, hi there, my name is Nicole. It is wonderful to meet you and thank you very much for clicking on today's video. Do consider hitting subscribe if you enjoy nail polish and lifestyle related content. I upload new videos every single week on Tuesdays and Saturdays and I also go live every Sunday. If you're in fact a returning subscriber, welcome back! How are you doing? Is anyone else really excited for this one? This will be my third year swatching this box. Prior to being a nail polish content creator, I always loved shopping this box. So it is pretty cool being able to swatch the box for you all. All the products featured in today's video were sent to me by the folks participating in the box for the purpose of swatching and reviewing. This video, however, is not sponsored. And as always, all thoughts and opinions are my own. While for the most part, most of the items featured in this box do not have caps on them, some of them do have caps. If you are new to the indie space, when a item has a cap on it, it means there are only a set number of those things available. Sometimes the makers are able to add more polishes or whatever when the item sells out, but it's not a guarantee. In years past, the things that had caps on them did tend to sell out rather quickly, so that is, I would highly recommend hopping on the website on Sunday if you want to pick these up. As always, down in the description box, I will have links to where you can purchase these polishes and as well as the non-nail polish. Hey, 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 do not mess with the tripod. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I've got like wrestling kittens on the floor. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And like currently I have a tripod set up on top of a little like caboodle thing and I don't think it's stable at all. But I still haven't been able to get my normal tripod fixed so we, we rigged a solution, a temporary solution. So as always, down in the description box, I'll have links to where you can purchase these items. I will have all of these social media pages for Breast Cancer Awareness Box. I will also have a link to the Facebook group if you'd like to get more information on the box as well. If you would like the individual social media pages and Facebook groups for the brands featured, I have all those listed over on my blog post on nicolosnails.com, as well as a written review and all of my swatch photos are over there too. Uh, Timestamps are in the description box as well. Let's just get into this video. Going in alphabetical order, first up we have all mixed up lacquers with Strength Within. This one is described as being a berry base with an intense green-blue-purple shifting shimmer and it has no cap. Strength Within had a fantastic formula and that shimmer is strong. Because that shimmer is so strong, the base is on the more sheer side so you will need to build this one up to get the most opacity. For my full hand swatches, I swatched this one in three coats. However, I do think this will be a two to three coater depending on personal preference. If you don't mind obvious visible nail line, coverage is even enough in two coats that it will be passable. You do get a little bit more depth in the base color by building this one up in three coats, but again, it's passable in two. So seeing the colors as described by the brand, it's like a greenish aqua to blue to purple at extreme angles. Removal will be very easy, but a little bit messy, and I had no issues with staining. And now we have Anchor and Heart Lacquer with Shine On Through. This one is described as a medium gray crelly base with rose gold to copper to pink shifting shimmer, silver reflective glitter, and a various shades of pink glitter in small and medium sizes. This one has no cap. First off, I want to say I love that this is a twist on what is a pink polish since we have a nice gray crelly base. This was a little bit on the thicker side, but I'm not surprised at that based on the amount of glitter in this one. This is going to be a two to three coater, likely depending on thickness of coats. If you go in for thinner coats, this will likely be a solid three coater. The glitters all spread out very evenly and easily. I did not need to hold the bottle upside down, but I did run this one through my nail polish shaker a few minutes prior to swatching it. So, you know, give this one a really good shake and you'll be good to go. I am very surprised surprised that the official description says that there are silver reflective glitters in here. In the bottle, I was seeing pink silver reflective glitters. I brought this one outside because I was having a really hard time seeing the reflective glitters indoors. This is not one of those like boom in your face reflective glitter polishes. It's like a very subtle twinkle. However, due to the amount of glitters in this polish, it does dry down textured. I would recommend going in with a second coat of top coat to keep everything nice and smooth. Oval, of course, will be on the more difficult side. Do not scrub this one off. Use the soak off method. And now we have Bo Rev's Lacquer with Hopeful Heart. This one is described as being a coral-leaning pink berry base with a green to magenta shifting shimmer, and this one has no cap. 
Hopeful Heart had a fantastic formula. This is a fairly opaque base. So this one's gonna be a two to three coater depending on personal preference. For my full hand swatches, I did opt to swatch this one in two coats. I would say the base color on this one leans very warm. So if you have warmer undertones like me, this is gonna look a lot more like corally red than corally pink on you. I am once again thrown off by the official description because in my notes, I wrote that I was also seeing holographic flakies in here as well as the shimmer being a greenish gold to pink to purple color shift. Colors obviously are gonna be up to personal interpretation, but I was definitely also seeing some holographic glitter in here. I feel like you can see it really easily in my photos as well. So that is two coats of Hopeful Heart, super easy removal, and I had no issues with staining. And now we have Colores de Carol with Thrive in Pink. This one is described as being a berry pink crelly base with Aurora Shimmer, Mermaid Flakes, Hollow Flakes, and Black Mini Shreds. This one has no cap. Thrive in Pink had a fantastic formula. It was a little bit on the thicker side, but overall I found it very easy to work with. In my opinion, this leans more on the jelly side than a crelly side, so I do think this one is likely gonna be a three-coater to really get that same color that you're seeing in the bottle. The flakies all spread out very evenly and easily, and there are also some big old flakies mixed in there. The flakies, even the large ones, do not dry down textured, but I did find that the big old flakies are a lot harder to get on the nail. I was trying so hard to get one on my final coat, so I think they might sink just a little bit in the bottle. I was able to get two on my thumb, so that's why we're getting a, a thumb shot here. In here is going to dry down textured. Removal will be very easy, and I had no issues with staining. And next up is Crystal Knockout with You're the Star. This one is described as being a bright pink crelly base with matte blue and aqua glitters, including dots and stars. It has no cap. If you have spent any amount of time talking to me about nail polish, you know my heart is always so incredibly happy when we have anything with star glitters, make it a crelly base and I will be ecstatic. I like it a lot. Or the star had a fantastic formula. Crystal Knockout knows how to do a damn good glitter crelly. You can kind of see here, I'm kind of moving my brush around to get the stars just to lay where I want them to lay. You have plenty of time to work with the polish. The glitter coverage that you're seeing here is me not giving this bottle a really good shake before swatching it. For a reason, I always forget to shake the bottle before I do the live swatches. So for my full end swatches, this is the glitter coverage that I got after running it through my nail polish shaker. So significantly more glitters, but still without doing like crazy shaking you still get a fantastic amount of glitter i didn't mention until now but this base color is like a neon pink neons are absolutely the worst to try to get color accurate but i did my best by bumping up the contrast and saturation to show you all what i was seeing in person the glitters of course dry down very textured you're going to want to double up on your top coat i opted to use a glitter smoothing top coat before my quick dry top coat and that combination smoothed everything out really nicely removal of course will be on the more difficult side do not scrub this one off. Use the soak off method or use a peel off base coat. And now we have Cupcake Polish with F Cancer. This one is described as being a magenta nail polish base with a red to orange to gold Aurora shimmer and it has no cap. F Cancer had a fantastic formula, but just like the other ones, this one does start off a little bit sheer, so you will want to build it up to get the most opacity. This is another one that I'm gonna call a two to three coater, depending on personal preference. For my full hand swatches, I did opt to swatch it in three coats. I found the shimmer in here came across to my eye as more of a pink to gold color shift than a red to orange to gold. The shimmer also appears to be a bit larger in particle size, so you get more of like a sparkly shimmer than like a shimmery shimmer, if that makes any sense at all. So that is F Cancer in three coats plus glossy top coat. Super easy removal, but on the more messy side. And now we have Envy Lacquer with Fighter. This one is described as being a micro glitter polish with pink and gold glitter, pink to gold micro flakes. It has a cap of 100 bottles. Fighter had a good but very thick formulation. When I initially started swatching this one, it had that wet sand level of thickness that reflective glitters often have. So I did end up adding a little bit of thinner to mine just to make it a little bit easier for application. I did give the brand owner a heads up that the formula was just a little bit too thick for easy application. So that should not be an issue for customer bottles. But once again, the official description is throwing me quite a bit. I feel like you can very clearly see here that there is definitely reflective glitters in this one. It lies like a reflective glitter. It looks like a reflective glitter. I don't know why that's not in the official description, but yeah, there's reflective glitter in here for sure. This polish is next level 
sparkly but in typical reflective glitter fashion this one does dry down very textured using a glitter smoothing top coat before your quick dry top coat will give you a nice smooth consistency removal of course will be on the more difficult side do not scrub this polish off just do not do it and now we have Great Lakes Lacquer with Strength Untold. This one is described as being a vivid fuchsia shimmer with it shifts orange to gold to green and has no cap. Like many of the other shimmers in this release, it is very sheer on that first coat, so you will need to build it up to get the most opacity. I opted to swatch this one in three coats. While I did still have a little bit of visible nailing with it in three coats, I really like the depth of color and how strong the shimmer looked after three coats more than I liked it in two. This is another more sparkly kind of shimmer polish and I found for the color shift it also to me looked like a pink to gold. I was not really picking up any green in person but I could see a little bit of it in the bottle. Nothing in here is going to dry down textured, removal will be very easy but on the more messy side and I had no issues with staining. And now we have Hearts and Promises with Attitude is Everything. This one is described as being a lilac holographic base with pink shimmer and pink chrome flakies. It has no cap. Attitude is Everything had a really good formula because this one is such a light lilac -y color. On that first coat, it is fairly sheer and fairly streaky. I found most of the streaks even out on the second coat. However, as the polish dried down a little bit more, I found that I had a couple of dark spots on a few nails that I thought would annoy me in photos. So I did opt to swatch this one in three coats. So I'll call this one a two to three coater, depending on how you feel about having dark spots on your nails. While I didn't see this one out in natural lighting, it seemed to be more of a delicate holographic than like a boom in your face holographic. Paired with the shimmer and flakies, this was a really pretty delicate polish on the nail. My photo show attitude is everything in three coats plus glossy top coat, super easy removal and I had no issues with staining. And next up is Hula Moon Nail Lacquer with Lean On Me. This one is described as being a bright eye-catching pink polish with a shimmer that shifts copper to gold to blue. It has a cap of 100 bottles. Lean On Me is a bright AF neon pink. This immediately made me think of all like the neon pink that we've been seeing courtesy of the Barbie movie. The base was a little bit on the thicker side, but I found it very easy to work with. It self-leveled very nicely. I do think that thickness added to the opacity on this one as I only needed to swatch it in two coats. Did not pick up any color shiftiness from the shimmer. To my eye, this looks like an electric kind of shimmer, like gives it an almost metallic look on the nail. So that is two coats of Lean On Me. Super easy removal and I had no issues with staining. And now we have Gin and Berries with Shirley You Chest. This one is described as being a bubblegum pink base with a red, orange, gold shifty shimmer as well as holographic flakes. This one has a cap of 200 bottles. Early You Chest had a fantastic formula. Shimmer is equally as strong as the boom holographic that you're getting from the flakies. This is not the most like obviously color shifty shimmer. It has a very metallic look on the nail. In my eye, the shimmer mainly kept to a reddish orangey kind of color. This is gonna be another two to three coater depending on personal preference and level of pickiness. If you are more picky about having any kind of dark spots, I would recommend wearing this one in three coats. It is passable in two. So my photos do show Shirley You Chest in three coats plus glossy top coat. Removal will be fairly easy, but also fairly messy. And now we have Leisha's Lacquer with Confianza. This one is described as being a silver holographic micro glitter base polished with pink micro holographic glitter and pink glitters in multiple hex shapes and sizes. This one has a cap of 150 bottles. Confianza. Had a fantastic formula. This one is sheer enough on that first coat, though I do think it has some potential to be used as a topper. There are a whole bunch of glitters in here of a variety of sizes. I found for the larger size glitters, they do seem to sink a little bit in the bottle. So either give this one a really good shake before you use it or keep it upside down between coats if you really want to get some of the larger ones out each time. Get a lot of hollow bling for your buck with this one. The base is holographic. There's holographic for glitters. Those glitters do dry down with some texture. I opted to go in for one thicker coat for my swatches. However, I do think for long-term wear, this one might benefit from either a second coat of top coat or being used with a glitter smoothing top coat to keep everything nice and smooth. This is gonna be another one that's gonna be a two to three coated depending on your own personal preference. I do wanna note, in two coats, there is some visible nailing with this one, but due to the fact that this is so ridiculously sparkly, 
I think it'll be more easy to ignore visible nail line with this one because there's like a lot going on for your eyes to focus on instead of just your visible nail line. My photos, however, do show it in three coats plus a glossy top coat. It will be on the more difficult side if you scrub this one off, so use the soak off method or a peel off base coat. And now we have Luna Lacquer with breasts. They need your support. This one is described as being a pink with a blue hue, shimmer, and hollow glitter. It has a cap of 100 bottles. First off, I freaking love the name of this polish. The base is on the more curly side. It's also a little bit on the thicker side. I found that it dries down a little sheer than it applies, so I'll call this one a two to three coater depending on personal preference. I found for me that this one dries down a little bit sheer than it applies. So when I got to the second coat initially, it looked like I had full opacity but as it dried down I found that I did have a few dark spots that I knew were going to bother me so I opted to add a third coat just to cover all of those up. Depending on if you're like me and get very annoyed at dark spots I will call this one a two to three coater. I did have a little bit of VNL with this one after three coats. Nothing too noticeable but I could see just like hints of my nail line. Nothing in here is going to dry down textured. Removal will be very easy but messy and I had no issues with staining. Next up is Linby Designs with The Breast Is Yet To Come. It is described as being a magenta base with a pink to orange shifting magnetic pull, pink to purple shifting micro flakies, as well as holographic micro flakies. This one has a cap of 100 bottles. The Breast Is Yet To Come had a fantastic formula, but it does start off very sheer, so you will want to build this one up to get the most opacity. My personal preference for magnetics is to always build up the base color to reach full opacity and then magnetize the final coat. And so that is what I did with this one. This reaches full opacity in two to three coats. I found it magnetized very easily for me. For my full hand swatches, I magnetized using a ring magnet. For the live swatch portion here, I am using an arch magnet. Also for my full hand swatches, my pointer finger and my pinky are unmagnetized and my middle nail and my ring finger are magnetized. And this one was not the most color shifty for me. The pink Pink to orange is a bit more subtle. It looks like a pink to a darker pink to my eye. Nothing in here is going to dry down textured. Removal will be very easy and I had no issues with staining. And now we have Monarch Lacquer with Pink Out. This one is described as being a bright pink base with a pink to orange shifting shimmer. Pink Out starts off very sheer, so you will really want to build this one up. I found that the shimmer is largely what gives this one opacity, so I opted to swatch this one in three coats plus glossy top coat. I find that the shimmer in here has an almost metallic look to it. It is not the most color shifty shimmer, but it does have a really pretty pink to goldish kind of color tone to it. Despite having an almost metallic-y look to it, you do not get any brush strokes with this one, but it's also not like a super sparkly shimmer either. I swatched this one in three coats plus glossy top coat. Removal will be very easy, but slightly messy, and I had no issues with staining. Next up is Music City Beauty with Fight Song. This one is described as being a pastel multi-chrome base with multi-chrome shimmer shifting from a pink gold to a green. It has a cap of 100 bottles. Fight Song had a fantastic formula. I am very surprised by the description on this one. In my notes, I wrote it down as being the palest of pale pinks with a pinky goldish shifting shimmer. The base is slightly on the thicker side, but I found it self-level and applied very nicely. Because this one is such a sheer base, Base. There were some streakiness and a little bit of dark spots. I'm going to call this one a two to three coater depending on personal preference. My photos show Fight Song in two coats plus glossy top coat. I didn't realize until I was looking at my footage after I swatched it that I did have a few dark spots on a few of my nails. So I think if I had seen the dark spots in person, I would have gone in for a third coat. Nothing in here is going to be difficult to remove or dry down textured. We'll want top coat for a nice glossy finish. Next up, we have Nailed It with Fearless. This one is described as being a taffy pink base with an indigo aurora shimmer as well as hollow flakes. It has a cap of 200 bottles. Fearless had a really nice but thicker formula. I am sure by now you are not surprised to hear this. This one is a bit more sheer, so you do need to build it up to reach full opacity. Bridge is overall very even, so if you don't mind a little bit of visible nail line, this one is definitely passable in two coats. I feel like for me personally, I would likely wear this one in two coats for personal wear. However, my full hand swatches do show it in three coats plus glossy top coat. The shimmer in here is fairly sparkly, so you do not get any brush strokes, and then the hollow flakies do not dry down textured. Removal will not be overly difficult and I had no issues with staining. Next up we have Night Owl Lacquer with Hope is Powerful. This one is described as being a wine tinted base with rose gold holographic micro glitter as well as a vibrant pink to peach to gold shifting shimmer. 
It has no cap. Speaking of super sparkly polishes, Hope is Powerful is ridiculously sparkly. It has a ton of glitter in it, and I was really surprised that the glitter does not dry down textured at all. I actually got to wear this polish for a little over a day, and it was still feeling very smooth and glossy 24 hours after I did my swatches and added top coat. This is sheer enough in one coat that I definitely think it can be used as a topper. If you want to wear it on its own, I would recommend building it up in three coats to really get the most out of the shimmer and the holographic glitter. Due to the fact that this polish is a glitter, it's going to be more difficult to remove. I would not recommend scrubbing this one off, soak off method, or a peel off base coat. And now we have Paradox Polish with 13 years cancer free. This one is described as being a coral to rose gold pink base with a silver magnetic, gold and rose gold flakies, as well as iridescent and holographic flakes. It has no cap. 13 years cancer free was a solid one coater on me. However, I will be showing it in two coats. This is one of those magnetic polishes that will look drastically different once you get this one magnetized. Once you magnetize this one, you can more easily see all of the flakies in here. With used a ring magnet for my full-in swatches, and you just saw me using a zigzag magnet for the live swatch. This one magnetized super easily for me. None of the flakies will dry down texture in here, but you will definitely want top coat for a nice glossy finish. Super easy removal and I had no issues with staining. And now we have Rogue Lacquer with Tougher Together. This one is described as being an orchid purple base with a strong pink shimmer and hollow flake prism finish. It has no cap. Tougher Together had a fantastic formula. The shimmer in here is strong. You do get some brush strokes with it, but for the most part, they do disappear as the polish dries down. The flakies all spread very evenly and easily, and they give off a whole lot of holographic sparkle. This one was surprisingly opaque for me. I only needed two coats to reach full opacity with it. Longer nail folks, you know the deal. You might need a third coat to reach full opacity, but for those of you with nails around my length, you should be good in two coats. Nothing in here is going to dry down textured, but you will definitely want top coat as the polish does dry down a little bit flat. And now we have Sassy Pants Polish with Ring the Bell. This one is described as being a bright magenta polish with a blue shimmer, light pink holographic glitter, as well as magenta holographic shreds. This one has a cap of 150 bottles. This polish has a more jelly-like finish, so you're going to really want to build it up to get the most opacity. I know you guys have heard that a lot in this video, but you know, we got a lot of doodads in these polishes, so you got to build them up because they start off a little bit sheer. The shimmer gives this polish an almost like metallic-y look to it, but you don't get any like lumpy, bumpy, dumpy feel from any of the glitters they do not dry down super textured and they don't look textured when paired with the shimmer either coverage overall is fairly even i did have a little bit of visible nail line with three coats however i found between the second coat and the third coat that you get a bit more depth and opacity when you add the third coat but since coverage is even you don't have to do the third coat if you're okay with like more obvious visible nail line the glitters of course will make removal a bit more difficult and a little bit more messy but overall it shouldn't be the most difficult thing to remove Next up is Sassy Sauce Polish with a Focus on the Fight. This one is described as being a bright bubblegum pink with a strong blue shimmer and glowy blue micro flakes. It has a cap of 500 bottles. And clearly, no, I have not learned my lesson about allowing my cat to sit on my lap while I'm recording live swatches because it just means I am painting cat hair onto my nails. I have not learned my lesson and that's what you saw a moment ago. Focus the Fight had a fantastic formula. I was very surprised at how opaque this polish was. I think after a couple of uses, this will likely be a one coater for my full hand swatch. Watches, I did opt to swatch it in two coats. The shimmer and flakes are a bit more on the more delicate side, so it gives the polish an overall look of more like an electric, metallic y kind of finish. Nothing in here is going to dry down textured. You will want top coat to give it a nice glossy finish, super easy removal, and no issues with staining. And now we have Sweet and Sour Lacquer with Remission Rocks. This one is described as being a flamenco pink Crelly base with matte pink hex glitters and squares in various sizes as well as micro hollow flakes and black flakes. It has no cap. Not gonna lie, I was really happy to see that Darlene opted to do a glitter crelly for this release. Formula application on Remission Rocks were both fantastic. This is gonna be another two to three coater depending on personal preference. If you are like me and you want all the glitter all the time, go for a three coats. That's what I did for my full hand swatches. I did find this base to be slightly, and I mean slightly on the thicker side, around what I would expect from a glitter crelly. The glitters, of course, do dry down fairly textured, so you're gonna to wanna to double up on your top coat to make sure you get a nice smooth finish. And of course, removal is going to be on the more difficult side. These are glitters we are talking about. 
Use the soak off method or a peel off base coat for the easiest removal. Do not scrub this polish off. And the final polish in the main box is by Zombie Claw Polish and this one is called Zombies Ate My Boobies. This one is described as being a bubblegum base that glows in the dark loaded with a blue green pink shifting shimmer. It has a cap of 200 bottles. Zombies Ate My Boobies had a fantastic formula and a really ridiculous name that I do appreciate. This is another polish that starts off fairly sheer and stays that way, but the shimmer, the shimmer is strong. It is giving everything you could possibly want from a shimmer. It is a more sparkly shimmer, so you do not get any brush strokes with it. The glow in the dark aspect in here gives the polish that kind of rubbery feeling that glow in the darks often give. I charged this one up using my black light flashlight and it charged up very nicely for me. And the glow in the dark aspect did not seem to fade away very quickly either. It held its charge very nicely. I swatched Zombies Ate My Boobies in the three coats plus glossy top coat. Removal is going to be fairly messy, but not overly difficult. I did receive a few non-nail polish items to share with you all. The first being from Ribbit Stick It. Because I knew this video was gonna be like really, really long, I did not record a full demo on using these water slide decals. I have quite a few videos already up on the channel demoing Ribbit Stick It's water slide decals. These are super user-friendly and very beginner-friendly as well and these water slide decals were no exception. I don't have pricing or a cap on this one yet. If I have one before the video goes up, it's gonna be written on the screen. So we have a variety of breast cancer awareness related themed images. As always, I found these super easy to use. If you ever have watched me do nail art, you know whenever I have a water slide decal sheet and there's something involving the middle finger, I'm probably gonna find a way to use that image on my middle finger. This was no exception, I couldn't help myself. For my image that I have up in this corner now of with the water slide decals. I use two coats of Essie Sugar Daddy and then one coat of Hollow Tacos Gold Flaky Taco. And then I put the water slide decals on. I did not put a white backing on the back of these water slide decals. I found since my base was light enough that I figured the colors would still pop nicely and they did. Also from Chloris de Carol, I do have their Thrive in Pink Wax Melts. I did not even realize this brand made wax melts, but they sure do. So the scent description on this one is citrus, bergamot, sandalwood, apple, marigold, jasmine, vanilla, and musk. And this scent is exclusive to the BCA box, according to the label at least. So unfortunately, I cannot figure out where I put my wax warmer, so I was not able to melt these in time for the video to go up. I will fully admit the scent on this one was not for me. I am not a big fan of the fragrance combination on this one. It kind of gives me very like I think between the bergamot, sandalwood, and the musk together, and yes, that, that is stormy. I generally prefer like sweet, fruity, I might be able to get down for a little bit of citrus, but I wasn't really a big fan of the musk. It smells to me like a cologne maybe, and I don't personally like the fragrance on it, but it does smell very strong. I don't have a weight on this, but it's gonna be priced at $5, and you get, you get six ribbons right in there. And the next batch of wax melts comes from Luna Wax. The scent description on this one is watermelon, citrus, mint, and basil. As a sweet and fruity gal, I was really excited to give this one a sniff. I am not generally the biggest lover of mint fragrances or flavors. The main scent that I'm picking up from this one is the watermelon and the basil. I feel like there's like just the slightest hint of mint in here, but the predominantly it smells fruity and a little like herbal at the same time. So for this wax melt bag, you are getting 4.7 ounces and one, two, three, four, six of, six of the little wax designs. These are relatively big, so I, I kind of feel like for some of these, you probably could snap them in half if your room is smaller too. And these are priced at $8.25. These next three polishes are all for the Ovarian Cancer Trio. This first one is Hearts and Promises, Braver, Stronger, and Smarter. I do not have official descriptions for any of these yet, so we're just gonna be going off what I was seeing. I'm gonna call this one a deep teal jelly base with linear holographic and blue flakies. Since this one appears to be in a jelly base, you will need to build it up to get the most opacity. Coverage is pretty even, so if you don't mind obvious visible nail line, it's pretty good in two coats. My full hand swatches, however, do show this one in three coats plus glossy top coat. I thought for sure that this one was going to be like a hardcore stainer, I did not personally experience any staining with it. However, definitely wear base coat. Do not even chance it. Wear base coat. I'm not going to lie. I absolutely love teals like this. So even if it did stain, I still would love it regardless. This is a super duper holographic base. So you get a ton of boom holographic. 
Nothing in here is going to dry down textured. Removal will be very easy. Use the soak off method just as a, another method of preventing some staining. Next up, we have Hearts and Promises with a Fight for Her Life. I will describe this one as like an aqua leaning teal with teal ish or aqua ish metallic flakies. And I think some kind of glitter is in here as well. I'm really bad at describing polishes. So like, don't be mad at me if my descriptions suck, okay? I'm trying my best. <laughs> All of the flaky sweat very evenly and easily. I did find that a few of those more metallic-y looking ones do dry down with a little bit of texture. It wasn't every single one. I just had a couple that would just like randomly poke up a little bit off of my nail. Not enough that I told myself I needed to use two coats of top coat, but I feel like for personal wear, I likely would throw on an extra layer of top coat just to keep everything nice and smooth. I really liked coverage for this one in two coats. However, I feel like in my footage, I can see a little bit of my nail poking through. So I'll call this one a two to three coater, depending on how you feel about that kind of thing. Removal is going to be very messy. Use the soak off method or a peel off base coat. And the final polish is Hearts and Promises once again with Overcome Through Courage. I will describe this one as a more cream slash crelly formulation that has a very delicate shimmer and a super fine flake. I found this one to be a little bit on the thicker side, but it self levels really nicely. I originally swatched this one in two coats plus glossy top coat. Looking at my footage, it was not opaque on me in two coats. I have a ton of dark spots on my nails. I truly don't know how I missed them. So I would actually say this one would do better in three coats. If you don't mind dark spots, maybe it's passable for you in two coats. For me, like, I don't know how I missed all of those dark spots. It's, it's making me shake my head. <laughs> dark spots and all, I do still think this one is very pretty. The shimmer is also very delicate. It's not quite a blink and you miss it shimmer, but it's very close. It gives the polish more of like a glow from within kind of vibe. Nothing in here is going to dry down textured. Removal will be very easy and I had no issues with staining. If you are new to my channel, I do not like picking favorites when it comes to charity releases as well as this breast cancer awareness box, mainly because like it's for charity and I don't want potentially my personal taste making anyone change their opinion on picking up a polish because again, a portion of these proceeds will be going to charity. So I don't, I don't like picking favorites when, when it comes to charity. I just don't, I, it feels weird to me. So I, I don't want to, but like, if you know anything about me, I'm sure you can guess which ones caught my eye the most, but like this box is also full of pink polishes. So like, <laughs> it might be a little bit tricky because you know I love me some pink. As far as pricing goes, there is a lot to go through, which is why I saved it for the end of the video. So each polish is priced at $13. All the brand's bottles range from 12 to 15 mLs. For the sake of time, I will have all of the pricing information down in the description box and I'll also do a pinned comment with all the pricing stuff. So if you want to pick up all the polishes in the box, which is a very popular option and always sells out very quickly, that box is priced at $275, and I think that's a total of 23 polishes. If you like the full box containing all the polishes, wax mounts, uh, nail art items, and all of those things, that box is priced at $325. There are also a lot of non-nail polish items that I did not receive that are gonna be available also from bracelets, stamping plates. I think there's a couple of nail art items that I also did not receive as well. So there's a lot of things to purchase. So $1 from each polish will be going to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. For the non-nail polish items, 10% of the total price will be donated to the same charity. On top of these polishes going to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, we also have a trio of polishes from Hearts and Promises and a a portion of proceeds from that trio will be going to a GoFundMe page for a friend of Chrissy who currently has ovarian cancer. I do not have information on those yet, but I don't think they have caps on them. If I missed anything, I'll have it in the description box because it's a lot of information to get through. One more time, the Breast Cancer Winners Box goes on sale this Sunday, September 3rd at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. I would like to note everyone's planning on picking up from this release. Have you shopped the BCA box before? Before we end today's video, I want to give a very special shout out to my channel members, besties the same. Thank y'all so dang much. Like, I really appreciate all the love and support. Your names, of course, are all on the screen right now. If you'd like to sign up for my channel memberships, I have a link for that down in the description box. But as always, please don't feel pressured to sign up for the channel memberships. Really, it's cool. Just, you know, like the video, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. All the things and we are good. So just thank you all so very much for watching today's video. I hope everyone has a fantastic week. Channel members, don't forget we have a live stream this Friday at 4 p.m. Everyone else, I'll see you on Sunday at 3 p.m. for my normal weekly live stream. Have a fantastic week, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!